In part four of A Rose for Emily, the townspeople of Jefferson are convinced Miss Emily is going to kill herself with the arsenic. Oh. Word spreads around town that Homer Barron mm -hmm. isn't a marrying man and that his year-long relationship with Emily hasn't resulted in any public plans for the future. This gossip is too much for some of the ladies who think Miss Emily is a disgrace to the Ugh. town. So they even forced the Baptist minister to talk to her about her conduct. The talk does not go well, and the minister refuses to talk to anyone but his wife about it. The minister's wife writes to Miss Emily's cousins in Alabama. The arrival of Miss Emily's cousins seems to fix things. Miss Emily purchases a man's toilet set, traditionally a comb, a mirror, and a brush, and has the initials HB engraved on each piece. She also buys a complete outfit of men's clothing, including a nightshirt. The townspeople take this as a sure sign that Miss Emily and Homer mm. are married. But then they realize Homer is gone. They figure he is preparing a new home for Emily's arrival, or at least laying low until the cousins depart. Sure enough, three days after the cousins leave, Homer ah. is seen on Miss Emily's doorstep. However, he is never seen again. And Miss Emily also seems to have disappeared. When she finally emerges six months later, she is overweight and her hair has started to turn gray. A few years later, she offers children's china painting classes at her home to the daughters and granddaughters of Colonel Sartoris's contemporaries. The lessons last a handful of years, but end up being canceled because of a lack of students. Then Miss Emily becomes a recluse. However, before anything can be done about her tax issues, she dies in a downstairs bedroom at age 74, her gray head propped on a pillow, moldy with age and lack of sunlight. The townspeople of Jefferson are sympathetic to Miss Emily's plight as they understand the stress and loss of reputation associated with spinsterhood. Yet instead of offering to accept her the way she is, they collectively decide it would be the best thing if she killed herself. This may seem barbaric to today's reader, but in the 19th century, suicide was one of the more acceptable means of reclaiming one's dignity after being labeled fallen. The narrator dances around the reason Homer won't marry Miss Emily. The narrator tells us it was known that he drank with the younger men in the Elks Club. And Homer himself said that he liked men. These clues imply that Homer was homosexual, but readers in the 1930s wouldn't have automatically jumped to that conclusion. During Faulkner's time, homosexuality was considered an abnormality.